We are all here today because we have lost something precious to us, Constable David Wynn. I have the task, as David's sister, of trying to share with everyone what he meant to us, his immediate family and extended family, and what we want you to know about him. One phrase that has been coming to me personally from all directions this past week is, you always spoke so fondly of your brother. That's what I intend to do now. I wrote and rewrote these words several times trying to get it right, trying to strike the just perfect David way of doing things. But I don't have unlimited time, I don't have his dramatic hand gestures, and I don't have the long pauses to make sure you're listening. So I'm not going to do this David's way, and I apologize, Dave. I'm also gratefully aware that there's been a lot of talk about David across the country, about the man that he was, and I'm here to tell you it's all true. So rather than give you his biography or a long list of stories about him, I'm just going to try to share what I think David would want us to do from here on out. David would want us to forgive. He was a peaceful man. He didn't have the time to even notice a reason for a grudge, much less hold one. He knew there were much better things to hold on to, so that's what he did. David would want us to find joy. Dave was an enthusiast in everything, from the way he took to scooting around the house in his walker as a baby, to the way he drove the old Toyota 4Runner up the sides of the bank of the South Esk, South Esk Fish Hatchery, to the passion he developed for Annapolis Valley Bulldogs, to the way he set his sights on Shelley when their paths crossed, and to the joy he found in fly fishing with Shelley and the boys. I've heard so many stories this past week of the way David felt joy and brought joy to others with his pranks and his wit. So while I know that Dave can appreciate how much we will miss him, he would want us to throw ourselves into the things that bring us joy and to do it for him. David would want us to follow our hearts, to do the things that we love. He certainly did that. He took on things with such heart. Swimming, scuba diving, model trains, camping were all things he put his heart into. Please don't think David tried things, tossed them away, and moved on. Oh no, he worked his way through these passions till he excelled. Then he simply added something more onto his skill set. Later on, together, Dave and Shelley followed their hearts and, and their boys into t-ball, hockey, soccer, cadets, and mountain biking with the boys, and let's not forget fly fishing. I know I've missed a few things here, but you get the point. David would want us to make a contribution to the world around us. He did that through his choice of professions. 20 years ago, Dave experienced a life-threatening car accident. Something happened to him on the long, fast ride to Halifax in the ambulance. And he came away from that experience determined to be a paramedic. He did just that, and he made a tremendous contribution to the people of Bridgewater, Nova Scotia for over a decade. People with passionate hearts and a desire to serve their community need to keep growing, and that's just what Dave did. In February of 2009, he went to Regina as part of RCMP Troop 47. In August of that year, he went to his first posting in St. Albert, Alberta, and, be, and by now, every one of us has heard how he served that community. There's a comment I noticed in one of the many condolence books for Dave, and it fits him perfectly. Simple, humble duty serves the community. Even now that he has left us, he continues to serve. We've been told that somewhere between 30 and 35 people will benefit from his tissue donation. Dave would want each and every one of us, every ca Canadian who has by now heard his name and seen his face, to be the best parent that you can be. Above everything that he was to me, Dave was the best dad ever. He and Shelley have raised three absolutely spectacular boys, Matt, Nate, and Alex. And this was not by accident. From before they were born, Dave couldn't wait to see them, and he had a plan. 
The plan was to be with them every possible moment. He shared the things he loved to do with them, and he embraced the new things he brought into their life as they grow into unique individuals. He would want us to strive to do the same. I thought I knew my brother really well. Over the past 10 days, there has been such an outpouring of stories about Dave and obvious love for him from the people that he has touched that he, I have realized he was far more than I ever imagined. Dave was an ordinary man with an extraordinary capacity to make the world a better place for everyone around him. We will miss you, Dave, but our love for you will last forever. Thank you.